close your eyes and watch the breath. And you notice the mind is going to be doing other things besides watching the breath. It's going to be talking. So try to talk to yourself about the breath. When they say that a mind and concentration is gathered into one, or has a single gathering place, this is what it means. Whatever activities are going on in the mind, they're focused on this one object. Your efforts to get the mind together with the breath. Any other conversation right now is not timely. You have to use the rules for your inner conversation as the same rules that you use for outer conversation. In other words, is it true? Is the breath coming in? Is the breath going out? Is the breath comfortable? Look into it. Is it beneficial? What can be done with a comfortable breath? Once the mind is settled with a comfortable breath, how do you maintain it? This is all beneficial. And is it timely? In other words, is it related to what you're trying to do right now? Or is it going to pull you away someplace else? These are the rules for good outside conversation, the rules for good inside conversation. This is one of the reasons why we practice right speech as part of the path, so you get used to engaging in right conversation. So when the time comes to stop talking with other people and you're turning to talking to yourself, your inner conversation is right speech as well. So don't think that the practice is simply a matter of what you do when you're sitting here with your eyes closed or when you're doing walking meditation. It's as you go through the day. The things you talk about, the things you think about, they're all part of the practice. You always try to keep these three rules in mind. The Buddha was once asked, would he ever say anything that was displeasing to people? It was a trick question. The person asking it would say, if the Buddha said yes, he would say things that are displeasing, then they would say, what's the difference between you and ordinary people? If the Buddha said he wouldn't say things that were displeasing, he was on record for having said some things that Devadatta didn't like. So they thought they could catch the Buddha. But the Buddha said, well, that's not the kind of question that deserves a categorical answer. It deserves an analytical answer. When speech becomes an issue, the question is, is it true? If it's not true, don't even say it. Even when you're saying things you know that are not going to deceive other people, you're simply exaggerating things for the sake of a joke. Still, it cheapens your speech. There are enough true things in the world that are funny that you don't have to exaggerate. Once it's true, then is it beneficial? There are a lot of things that are true out there that really don't benefit anybody. Or they may benefit some people, but not the people you're passing in the mantra, so you don't have to pass them on. And then finally, is this the right time? This could be whether this is the right time to say something pleasing or displeasing, or is this just the right time for this topic? When your speech follows these three guidelines, you help to avoid idle chatter and all the other forms of wrong speech. And your speech actually becomes a gift to other people. And then when the time comes to meditate, you've learned the principles of right speech and you can apply them to your meditation, and the meditation will go a lot more smoothly. So think of inner speech and outer speech as being connected. Inner practice and outer practice are being connected. That way both areas of your life will develop.